Morning. Good morning, Emily Thornbury. In a few weeks' time, you could be Foreign Secretary. Um, will you, at that point, tell Donald Trump he is not welcome here for a state visit? No, because he's been invited, and I don't think it's right for us to disinvite him. I think it was a mistake to invite him quite as quickly as, as, he, as, as he was invited. Frankly, Obama had to wait for years. I think it would have been better to see him settle down. Some so, people will say so much for your radical change in the ethical foreign policy. Jeremy Corbyn uh, himself said he was not welcome in Britain. Uh, yeah, I mean, it takes these things in stages. I think we have to welcome the American president to Britain. We have to work with him. The difference that I have is I would be prepared to stand up to him. I would be prepared to say, I'm sorry, Mr. President, but you're wrong about that. You know, we are supposed to be good friends, and these values are not our values. You're doing the wrong thing. So you have him over here, and then you give him a scolding. You know what he's like. He may well not want to come under those circumstances. Well, there we are. I mean, I also hear that he doesn't want to share a carriage with Prince Charles because he doesn't agree with Prince Charles on climate change. I, I mean, the, the, mm. it will be a bumpy ride um, if, but he, if but, President but Trump under comes Labour, to Anyway, he still, he still comes here this summer if you're, if you're a foreign secretary. We can't disinvite him once he's invited. I think that that would be a, a great mistake. Why not? Because I think that it would be to the detriment of our country. Right. Let's move on to the, the ethical foreign policy directly. Um, you've said that uh, Labour, unlike the Conservatives, would not turn a blind eye to human rights abuses in, for instance, China. What does that actually mean? I think that we shouldn't be, we should be, af we should not be afraid to raise these issues and we should not be afraid to raise these issues despite the fact that we may be going for a trade deal with a particular country but we do have to be clear about the things that we disagree with the country with and, and, and I am very worried, I am very worried that when I see Theresa May going to, you know, the Gulf states for example, and desperately after trade deals and so on. She, can, she doesn't raise the issue of Yemen. She doesn't raise the fact that Saudi Arabia has been, has been bombing weddings and funerals and civilian is, targets and Is so your on. ethical foreign policy sufficiently ethical that if you raise these issues and you get given a, a very dusty response or a hostile response, the Chinese hate this kind of thing being raised, and you actually stop trade deals happening, you'd go as far as to in, endanger trade deals, endanger the involvement of the Chinese, for instance, in our nuclear Industry, I'm yeah. not, don't take these too far. I'm not saying that we're going to boycott China, for heaven's sake, but there is a middle way through you know, this, the sort of fawning, frankly, which I think that we have seen Theresa May indulging in relation to Donald Trump um, and the way in which we would approach things. Let me turn, if I might, to, to Trident, because this is another issue. Um, you don't like the Trump administration, and yet we rely on that administration for very close cooperation to make our Trident submarines work. Uh, in terms of targeting and so forth. Do you withdraw that cooperation? Will our nuclear deterrence still depend upon the Americans under Labour? Uh, the most important part of our defence is NATO, and that is a partnership that we have with America and the rest of, the, of our NATO allies. And we are committed to that, and we should be. And we have been committed to NATO for a number of years, and that continues. And so we need to work collectively with NATO. So from your point of view, NATO is very, very important and a crucial part of our international obligations? Yes. I ask you that because Jeremy Corbyn clearly disagrees with that. I'm going to ask you to look at something he said very recently. Here's Jeremy Corbyn talking directly about NATO, and the words are very important. We, in the radical end, the left of the unions and the Labour Party, have got to be realistic that NATO is a major problem and a major difficulty, and we have to campaign against NATO's power, its influence, and its global reach because it is a danger to world peace and a danger to world security. So there it is. Are you going to campaign against NATO's world power or not? I think that's a quote from six years ago. And, uh, and Jeremy, well, has, he, he, uh, Jerem, he, Jeremy has been on a uh, journey, to co you coin a phrase, and there have been a number of discussions and it has been made, you know, we have had, we, it, it is quite clear that the predominance of opinion and, you know, it, within the Labour Party is that we are committed to NATO. And the reality, Emily, hang on, the reality is, is that we have been relying on our partnership in NATO and the way that we have been buying things, the way in which we have been committing things. If we were to pull out of NATO, our forces would be, for example, okay, how listen, would we get our forces, no, hang on, how would we get our forces off Salisbury Plain at the moment without the assistance of NATO? We don't have enough frigates to be able to move them onto the continent of Europe if necessary, have, if the Russians were Come, to come rolling over the hill. Have you made these points to Jeremy Corbyn? Yes, I have. Uh, and so you've put him back in his box compared to what he was saying, because he repeated those kind of sentiments during his first leadership campaign. You, can see from the, you will see from the manifesto that our commitment to NATO is a clear one. And you repudiate what Jeremy Corbyn is, was, was saying there in, in 2011? I'm not 
not fighting with anybody. I am telling you that the Labour Party's position is a clear one. And so I am is, Shadow Foreign is, Secretary. This is somebody who's going to be Prime Minister if you yes. win the election. And he is saying that NATO is a major international problem and that the Labour Party He's should not, campaign against it. That's, it's not fair. If you, if you heard what he said at Chatham House, he did not say this. He did not say this. You know, he is clear that we have a commitment to NATO and that is that. So you can unsay these kind of things? I mean, you can change your very, mind. Very clear... You can change your mind. You'll find that lots of politicians change their minds. Let's move on to to the United Nations. Generally speaking, yes. Will uh, a Labour government, Britain, um, engage in military operations without the support of the UN ever? We don't think that it is right for there to be interventions in other countries without it being done on a multilateral basis. We do not think that it was right for Theresa May to give unconditional support to Donald Trump in, in bombing Syria. We don't think that was right. We don't think he should be encouraged to think that it's right for him to behave unilaterally. We think that that undermines the security of the world. And the best way for the international community to proceed is, is by way of agreement. And, we, and it, it makes it Which difficult. Which means the UN you know? security. Council. It means that you get UN Security Council. Because my question, therefore, is, is it right to give countries like China, whose human rights record you've attacked, and Russia a veto over any possibility of us using military action ever, which is really what you're saying? I think it is very difficult. Um, I mean, I think, for example, um, on the in Kosovo, for example, which is a historic example, mm. um, the Russians were vetoing the use of military force in relation to Kosovo. But there was international agreement that uh, there should be some action in Kosovo, with the exception of the mm. Russians. And there was the development of the of the of the doctrine of responsibility to protect. And so, under that doctrine, it was it was legal at that point for there to be an involvement in Kosovo. The, and the, Robin, the Robin Cook led the the charge that you've, you've cited him. A yeah, lot. He, and he, and led he the was. Charge on that, and he voted for that. And he was responsible. And was. he was he was developing the responsibility to protect doctrine. And Jeremy Corbyn voted and spoke against that involvement. Who was right? Do you think Robin Cook or Jeremy Corbyn? I think that Robin was right. Robin was right. And Jeremy Corbyn was wrong about that. And you, so, so it, looking ahead to other possible uh, areas of tension, do you think a future Labour government would send a task force again to the Falklands if there was a crisis there? Yes. They would. So under those circumstances, because again, Jeremy Corbyn has said he wants to settle down and negotiate with the Argentine. Uh, government about the future of the Falklands and I wonder if you would be part of that negotiation. I think that as a, as a matter of last resort, if British citizens are being attacked, we defend them. But we don't want to get into a position whereby, unlike the Conservatives, who seem to be so gung-ho, who seem to be so kind of, we'll send in a task force, we'll bomb this, we'll do that. No, that you have to look at the alternatives first. You have to try, I mean, you're, in the end, there is no settlement to international disputes without there being international do you, agreement. Do you and it's a question of how do you get there fastest. Do you but if think we're under attack, we defend ourselves. Do you think there is an available compromise over the Falklands to be done? Well, I think that as so long as the people of the Falklands wish to remain British, they remain British. So that's not going to be compromised. I think that there, there, there needs to be. Hang on, that there, there needs to be. I think there needs to be a future in terms of talking to to neighbours of, of the Falklands. And I think that it is to the economic advantage of both that that they are able to work more closely than they are at the moment. But certainly not undermining the sovereignty of the, so the Falkland Islands. Because you, again, you see, this doesn't seem to be what Jeremy Corbyn thinks. It seems to me ridiculous that in the 21st century we're getting. To some enormous conflict with Argentina about the islands just off it. Yes, of course, the islanders have an enormous say, but is, let's bring about some sensible dialogue, he says. So, in a sense, he is saying, let's, let's talk about the future of the islands. Well, you, I mean, I don't disagree I'm being with very what you're I'm being very yeah. unfair to you. You're being Cornby. extremely unfair. I'm, I'm, I'm quoting Jeremy Corbyn. No, 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 you're not. Again. No, 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 it's fine, it's fine. Look, what Jeremy just said, why do I disagree with that? I don't see why I should disagree with that. I mean, you say, this is what he says, and in effect, therefore, he's saying something. I don't agree with you. I think what I've said is entirely in line with what Jeremy's just said. Let's ask you about the big policy announcement of the last couple of days from the Labour Party, the Robin Hood tax. Yeah, yeah. Now, Sadiq Khan, who's in charge of London, has called this madness and says, if you proceed without international agreement on a tax like this, companies just leave the UK at a time when we're leaving the EU already. And it's a really, really dangerous policy. Well, I don't think that's, again, I don't think that's an exact quote um, from Sadiq. Madness is but, exact. Uh, but the, but the, the truth is, is that at the moment, there are, we have a tax which, is, which applies when you, when you buy stocks and shares. Um, and, and at the moment, some people who are called market makers, who are hedge funds and so on, if they buy these, these, uh, these shares, they don't pay the tax. Don't really understand why that is. That seems to be a development. And then the other thing is, is, uh, is, the, is that we also think that they, we should extend a tax 
to different types of financial instruments such as derivatives because actually that's a kind of it's a betting on the stock market and it will help to stabilize the stock market many other countries do it Hillary Clinton wanted to do it if she was elected as president no one's saying that she's trying to undermine Wall Street the the European Union are looking into developing a policy but in you'd relation agree to it, it should be done in coordination with other countries to, well, to avoid hedge fund managers simply moving to Paris or moving to Dublin or wherever they want to move to I mean you want to keep the businesses in, in well Britain. I think I think that actually the the House of Lords committee on this was very interesting and they looked at any changes of behavior and they said that they didn't think that it would be as drastic as some of the doomsayers say that it will right. and it's in the end it is a question of just you know, I think of just tidying this this tax up it doesn't seem to me to be right that you can bet on the stock market um, or bet on a company's debts mm. and not have to pay tax whereas if you want to invest in the company you have to pay tax OK, one final question. What do you say to your colleagues like Ben Bradshaw, who are going around telling voters in their local constituencies, vote for me, that doesn't mean a Labour government? I think that everyone wishes to have, that there is a choice. We will either get a Conservative government or a Labour government. And that is the choice that the people have coming up in front of them. And there is an entirely different vision. You know, our vision for Britain is an entirely different one to the Tories one. And people, and, and, you know, and people need to accept that. So those we Labour candidates to... who say, vote for me, that does not affect the future of the government to being defeatist. Well... I mean, I think that we have a, I think that it's, we have another three weeks to go. I think that everything is to play for. And I think that we have, you know, you can see the way in which we, we on a day to day basis are attracting more support. I think that the things that we came out with in the manifesto are enormously popular. Actually, we're talking to the public. We're giving them answers to their day to day problems. You know, and people need to look at, the, at, at what choice they have. You know, not, not Theresa May's hair, not whether or not Jeremy Corbyn should shave or anything like that is about, is about which politicians can offer you what. What is the two different futures right. that Britain has? And the Labour one is a much more positive one and is much more in line with what people want. There is all to play for. And I don't want okay. them to be, you know, to be quite as defeated as he is. As to whether Jeremy Corbyn should shave, we can discuss that later on because you're going to come <laughs> join us again. But for now, Emily Thornberry, thank you very much indeed. And